Hi, everyone. So I just introduced myself. Um, I'm Emma, Emma Dodson. I'm from University of Westminster. I'm the course leader of uh, Illustration BA. Um, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about um, portfolios and what we like to see in a portfolio. Um, could you go to the next slide, please? Uh, a little bit about the University of Westminster, um, in case anyone isn't isn't aware of us. Um, I'm here to represent the College of Design, Creative and Digital Industries. Uh, we're a big university, but we have a campus in Harrow. Um, and at Harrow, it's a school of arts and we have a school of media and communication. Uh, next slide, please. And the subjects that we um, teach, that you learn and that campus are um, um, broadly, animation, architecture, creative media practice, fashion and various affiliated courses, um, film and television, fine art, graphic design, illustration, uh, digital media, including journalism, music, photography. Uh, I think public relations comes into the digital media as well. So we have a lot of different sorts of courses, different sorts of creative courses um, that bump along with each other in that campus. Okay, thank you. Next one, please. Okay, so um, your portfolio, what we want to see, um, I think is going to be, uh, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the things we like to see in your portfolio, uh, a little bit about how you might put your portfolio together, and also I've got some examples of um, students that applied to us uh, on illustration last year, um, just so you get an idea of maybe the variety and the different ways um, that portfolios can be sent to us. At the moment, um, most of the courses are uh, accepting portfolios as digital files. And all the courses have a slightly different way of, um, they have slightly different requirements for portfolios and what you put together. Um, so I'm gonna, I can talk very specifically about illustration, but while I'm doing that, I'm gonna talk quite generally about what an arts portfolio might look like. Okay, next slide, please. So three things that your portfolio should reveal about you. Uh, I think the first most important thing that we uh, want your portfolio to reveal about you is your interests. What are you inspired by? What do you care about? What gets you motivated and makes you kind of excited to be in the world? Um, for illustrators, it can be a very great number of things. And I just put a few things, um, stories, the natural world. Uh, people, fashion, music, politics, social issues, the city, pop culture, philosophy. It could, the, the list could be endless, um, but those are some sort of general ideas of things that, that people have come to us before. Um, this lady's portfolio that I'm showing you, Rachel, here, um, her interest was very much in about uh, the relationship between animals and humans and what we eat and how we eat our animals. And um, she was very passionate about that. So a lot of her work was very much geared around that interest that she had. So we're really interested to see what you're interested in. We're not interested to see what you think we might be interested in. We really genuinely want to know what motivates you, what fires you up, what, what are your passions, what are your interests. They can be strange and obscure. That's unique to you. Uh, more of those, the better. Okay, next slide, please. Aha, there you go. Oh, we have moving. I didn't know that would move that slide. Um, so the next thing that we need, thank you for that. Um, the next thing we like to see is your skills. Yeah, those should be somehow captured in the portfolio in some way. Um, what you can do and what you enjoy doing most of all. Yeah, so um, for most arts courses, a range of skills is good to show. Um, but what you enjoy is really, really important to show. And they may be all of these things. They may be just some of them. 
And if it's just one, if you just love drawing and you're really brilliant at it, just show us lots of beautiful drawing. Um, but it's good to showcase any digital skills that you may have. Not everybody has those um, yet. It's not, it's not important. Um, some countries, some, some universities, some schools don't have that facility. Um, but it's important that you can draw. It's important that you can visualize your ideas, what's inside your head. Um, if you have any filmmaking, that's great. Storytelling, always good. Visual problem solving, um, specifically if you're applying to courses like illustration or graphic design or ones where, you know, they're client led. They're, there is usually a problem for you to solve. It's really good for us to see that you can find a solution to a, a, a brief, a, a specific um, theme or task that you've been given to solve. Yeah, so that's really useful to put in a portfolio. Not so necessary maybe for fine art. You know, it might be more that they're, um, you know, how you can follow a theme perhaps. Uh, if you have any photography, animation, printmaking, sculpting, painting, any surface design, character design, typography, general design, embroidery, puppet making, any of those things are good for illustration for us. Um, we want to see as broad a spectrum as possible. Um, and I've taken people in the past who've had a portfolio just of photography, um, but I've seen from their photography that they're very clever image makers, for example. I've seen from their photography that they can tell a story. Um, I had one student who had been a puppet maker and that's all she had. She had a, a big box of puppets <laughs> um, and she was very good at embroidery and she could stitch and she could print make and she could draw, design her puppets. But basically her, her skill set was puppet making um, and she was a brilliant illustrator because of that. So all these things, nothing is too weird to show us. In fact, the, the broader, um, the broader your box of, 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 of skills, um, the happier we are. Okay, next one, please, if it works. Okay, the third thing that your portfolio should reveal about you is your creative approach. So this is how you develop an idea from an initial brief or a theme to a final outcome. How do you find inspiration? Yeah. What do you do? Does does your do your ideas, do your images, do they just come out of your brain straight onto the page or do you search around? Are you someone who um, likes to go out into the world and see what people are doing and um, draw lots of trees and squirrels? Or, you know, are you somebody who, yeah, yeah I, I, everyone's using, you know, Internet to search for inspiration, Pinterest, Google, whatever. Um but where do you go? What do you do? I, nothing is wrong. Nothing is right. But it's just your way. Be honest. Yeah. How do you find your inspiration? Show that in a, in a portfolio. So when you're developing an idea, when you're showing how you develop your idea, you know, that might be part of it. You know, some people begin just from, you know, drawing the th thoughts in their head. Some people are like to put on some music and and draw with that going on in their in their ideas coming out onto the page as well. Yeah, so how do you work? How do you use research? Yeah, that may be a thing. How do you find out a bit more about a subject? You know, you may have some very clear ideas in your head and a very um, clear idea of what you want to communicate. But how do you how do you find do you do you need visual research? Do you need other imagery to help that come to life? Um, do you look at other artists, what they've been doing? Do you look into the subject of the thing to see different perspectives? All these things are good. Yeah. So um, we just want to see what you do. Um, but it's important that you don't just show us final outcomes. It's important wherever possible to show us your process how you got to those final outcomes. That's where we're interested. We're interested to see how your mind works as well as how your, your imagery, imagery turns out. Um, do you experiment with different media or design approaches to explore an idea or to solve a problem? Yeah, this is important as well. 
you know, if you're somebody who who doesn't really have an idea, you know, they have a vague, vague, strange notion of an idea initially, and you're someone who has to go and discover it through making, you know, through drawing, through collages, through printmaking, through building, you know, something in three dimensions. You know, sometimes people, they can't make a film in the traditional way that they think. A film needs to be made with the storyboard first or the script, then the storyboard. Some people go out and they create, they just film lots of stuff and come back and edit it together. These are all valid approaches. Yeah, so we want to know your way, how how you work. Um, yeah, that's it.